to get your take uh, on some. I don't want to just. I don't want to characterize it. You you characterize it for me. What what many people are saying is promising uh, vaccine news. Well, what's your read on on the safety data that we early safety data we got about the Johnson and Johnson vaccine? Well, I think both the efficacy and safety data from the two of the newest vaccines, the Johnson and Johnson, actually three vaccines, the Johnson and Johnson adenovirus vaccine uh, that we um, that was released uh, this week. There's a second adenovirus vaccine from AstraZeneca Oxford that's now been is being released by the European medicine agencies for the European Union. And there's the Novavax vaccine, which is a particle vaccine. Um, we haven't published it, but we're starting to get some really good information about our recombinant protein vaccine that we're doing with Texas Children's, Baylor, and Biological E in India. So we're looking at four new vaccines that will be coming online in various stages. And this is important because the mRNA vaccines by themselves are not adequate for scaling up. Um, so we need these vaccines. Number one and number two, we've got to get them soon because I'm very worried now about the three variants, three or four variants that we are nowhere here from Brazil and the United Kingdom and uh, in South Africa. Those look really worrisome to me and some predictions are saying these are going to take over uh, and now compete the other strains by the spring. Uh, some of the data that I read uh, suggests that uh, the, the J and J vaccine, at least the trial results, showed a, a, a significant drop in efficacy in places like South Africa and, and Brazil with with those two strains and handling the UK strain uh, a lot better. Uh, are you concerned about that? Not as concerned. I think it'll be good enough to give pretty good levels of protection. But here's here's the worry. Um, we're being too slow in, in accelerating our vaccination rates, uh, not only in Texas, but across the United States. And the race now is to vaccinate ahead of those variants. So it has to be all hands on deck to vaccinate by later this spring, early summer, the entire U.S. population, or at least three quarters of the U.S. population ahead of the variants. And that has to be the number one priority. If these variants take hold and we don't pick up our vaccination uh, rates, does, will that just increase the length of the pandemic or delay a, a return to normalcy? That's, that's right. And, um, and the deaths will start to climb. And we'll get to 500,000 deaths soon, 600,000 deaths by May. There's no end in sight, uh, Marcelino. We'll be getting 700, 800,000 deaths unless we can get ahead of this and, and pretty soon. I'm really worried about the variants. And, um, and one, because they're much more transmissible, that means more people will get infected. So we'll, we'll eventually see the entire, almost the entire US population uh, infected that's not already infected before or been vaccinated. Uh, and the, the, those deaths will, will climb. Uh, one, because the infections are up, but also because there, there may be something intrinsic about some of these variants that cause higher mortality rates. So this is, this is a pretty dire public health crisis right now and Homeland Security issue. We've got to move faster on the vaccination rates. In terms of the efficacy rates, when people look at them, I think J&J &J had 85% efficacy in the United States preventing serious illness. 72% uh, efficacy in preventing you from catching COVID, if, if I have my numbers correctly. It, it's, it's a bit less than uh, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. When people, what, what should people read into those differences and should that, should that impact which vaccine they, they try to get or is it just a matter of getting vaccinated, period? Well, it's a matter of getting whatever you can, uh, but if it's any comfort, um, the, there's also a two-dose J&J uh, &J trial underway and I think in two doses, those the J and J vaccine will be as good or even better than the Moderna and the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. And uh, quite honestly, a single dose of the J and J is better, probably better than a single dose of the uh, uh, of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. So it's not as if you're getting a lesser vaccine. It's just as good. It's just that we may be giving this in a single dose instead of two doses. If the J&J &J vaccine is approved in short order uh, by the FDA, 
what type of impact do you think that will have on those vaccination rates that you want to increase? Do you, do you think a lot of people are saying it's a game changer? Is that a safe way? Is that a, is that a good way to characterize it? Do you think it can be? Well, it can be, but unfortunately, in the immediate future, it won't be because we don't have enough doses. It hasn't been scaled to production adequately yet. Um, and that's why I think we have to get the other vaccines up and get them all moving forward. Because as I say, if you want to get ahead of the variants, if you wait till the fall, as is being proposed currently, um, that won't be adequate. We need to move this along now. Uh, the the J and J numbers. I'm not sure how many millions they're they're ready to produce or have produced already. Um, do you think it makes a dent in the in in, in the rates of vaccination? Does, does it do anything in terms of helping us get there quicker? It does. We have to get to three million immunizations a day. We're only a, we're less than one million now, so we have to increase three times the rate. Um, I think we've pushed the two mRNA vaccines about as hard as we can, and now we have to bring on the others. So J&J &J is a help. But, you know, we also are sitting on a lot of millions of doses of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. We should be approving that now. Um, it's already been approved by the European Medicines Agency. Bring that along uh, now. Bring the Novavax along. You know, bring ours along. We've not had any help so far from the federal government are bringing ours along. So all those things have to happen if we're going to make a serious uh, attempt to vaccinate ahead of the variants. If, if all those va uh, vaccines do come online and are able to be used uh, shortly or in the next few months, uh, do you think that 3 million per day figure is, is doable? And, and do, follow up to that, do you think it's doable without, you know, a fourth or fifth vaccine on, on the market? If we have all those vaccines in hand, it's definitely doable. It'll be work, right? I mean, we're not going to be able to do this only with the pharmacy chains or only with the medical centers, although they're doing a very good job. We'll have to create additional vaccination hubs, and we're already doing that in many parts of Texas, including Houston. So those will get up to speed. Then the rate limiting step is going to be availability of vaccines, and that's where we need to move very quickly. What do you tell folks who have not been vaccinated, who are interested in getting vaccinated, who are seeing uh, more vaccines possibly come online? What would be your message to them in terms of which one they get, when they get it, and what they should continue to do to, to hopefully get in the queue and get the shot? You know, my, my message all along is don't overthink it. All of these vaccines work by inducing uh, high levels of virus neutralizing antibody, and that's what's going to save your life. And certainly don't wait for any one particular vaccine. Get what you can. And um, and don't be hesitant about it. Um, you know, we're still seeing a lot of vaccine hesitancy in the African-American community. We did a study with a group at Texas A&M. The Kaiser Family Foundation did as well. With these new variants coming, I mean, if people who, are, who, have, who have the ability to get vaccinated but are choosing not to, you need to rethink this. We're looking at a pretty awful uh, uptick in the number of uh, serious hospitalizations and deaths. As bad as things have been, uh, the, we're about to see something far worse. Uh, bottom line, uh, I, what I'm hearing you say essentially is getting any vaccine when it comes to COVID-19 vaccine that's available, it's better than not being vaccinated. Any of these vaccines that's released through emergency use authorization by the US Food and Drug Administration, uh, will save your life. It's as simple as that. Um, All right, and one closing but, question for and, you. And if enough people get vaccinated, uh, we could also halt transmission. And if we could do that by the summer, it would be amazing. Okay, well, one closing question for you. Uh, we, we've discussed last weekend that uh, the figure needs to be 3 million, not 1 million a day. Um, did you see anything, I mean, we check in with you usually every Sunday ahead of the week. Did you see any progress in, in, in increasing numbers? I know it, we're still a long way off, but are you seeing signs of moving in the right direction? Where, where do you stand on that? Yeah, we're definitely moving in the right direction, but we're going up incrementally rather than in, lin in a linear way rather than exponentially. So now we're probably about 10% of the U.S. population vaccinated. Um, but only about 1.5% is fully immunized, meaning they got two doses. So, so Marcelina, you know what 1.5% rounds off to? That rounds off to zero. So, so we still have we've got to do better. We've got to accelerate this thing.
a quick follow up. I know we had discussed and uh, and as the course of this pandemic has gone on, we we discussed how th there was an end in sight. You know, we, we were getting there. I think a lot of people hearing information about these variants, it's it's kind of depressing, frankly, because it seems like we may be in this longer than than we expected, even with vaccines. Um, do you do you, do you no, and, I, and I you know and honestly, I was one of the first ones out there saying the end's in sight. In part is because I felt that under Operation Warp Speed, there was a plan in place to vaccinate the American people and only found out afterwards that the plan meant putting the boxes on the backs of the FedEx and UPS trucks, and there is no plan. Now, at least we have a plan. So things are going to get better. The question, and, you know, we have a plan now, whereas before we didn't. So there are good things happening. We just have to move it along faster. All righty. I appreciate your time, Dr. Hotes. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. We'll put this on, we'll put this on at 10 tonight. Okay. Thank you so much.